Hello friends and not yet friends, welcome back to Mary's Test Kitchen, where I'm excited to share my vegan chicken and broccoli with you. If I can't make it for you in person, this has got to be the next best thing. Sharing how to make my favorite plant-based low effort but high flavor meal when I'm lazy about making dinner, which let's be honest, is almost every night this season. And I have a few tactics to make this recipe even more friendly for your end of the day self, which I'll get into as the video goes on. But the first tactic is using my chickeny chickless seitan as the main protein. Because you have some prepped in the fridge by now, right? By the way, thanks for all the great comments on that video and the warm welcome back. I feel so lucky to have such a sweet and supportive community. Anyways, of course you can sub in your favorite store-bought vegan chicken alternatives or whatever you have on hand, like beans, tempeh, or tofu. This is your vegan chicken and broccoli and there are no rules. Just guidelines such as please start steaming your rice now before anything else so you'll have it ready when your plant-based chicken and broccoli is done. For two adults, I like to prepare one cup of uncooked jasmine rice. After roughly measuring, I take this to the stove to rinse until the water turns clear, then add the appropriate amount of water. You've probably seen me use this measuring technique before. Just use your finger to measure the height of the rice, and then make sure the water line hits double that. Then put it on the stove over high heat, and let it just start bubbling. Immediately, turn the heat down to low, and let it simmer with the lid on for 15 to 20 minutes, while we take 10-ish minutes to prepare everything for our 5-minute stir-fry. First, let's get our pre-shredded chickeny chickless seitan from the fridge, and if it's not already torn into small bite-sized pieces like this, go ahead and do that. You want to end up with 8 ounces, or about roughly 2 cups worth. Then, prepare a marinade. With 1 tablespoon of water, and one teaspoon of Chinese mushroom stir-fry sauce, which, if you didn't already know, is the vegetarian sauce made specifically to replace Chinese oyster sauce in Chinese cuisine. It adds a salty, fermented, very savory, distinct flavor, and while you might have to go to an East Asian grocery store or look for it online, it's quite inexpensive and well worth the effort, especially since you can use it for lots of dishes like fried rice, my vegan tofu katsu, black pepper tofu, and more. Back to the marinade, you'll also want toasted sesame oil for its lovely fragrance and to add a little body. Mix it all together. Then you can add your vegan chicken shreds, or protein of your choice. Just keep in mind this chickeny chickless seitan is quite flavorful already, so if you add a bland protein instead, you can bump up the savoriness a little by adding a bit more of soy sauce or extra mushroom stir-fry sauce, or wait until the end so you can taste and adjust. I'll leave that decision in your very capable hands. Let that sit while we prepare the rest. I'll do the stir-fry sauce first, which starts with some vegan chicken broth. I came across this President's Choice variety recently, and they've been coming up with so many vegan products lately, which is awesome. But sorry to my international friends, I believe this one is only available in Canada. However, you can use any vegan chicken broth you like, or even regular vegetable broth. You'll need three quarters of a cup of broth, and you may want to keep a little more handy for later, but that's optional. Then two teaspoons of regular soy sauce. Of course, for my gluten-free friends, choose gluten-free tamari or coconut omitos or something like that. And the same amount of Shaoxing wine. I'm not sure if Shaoxing wine is gluten-free, so if that's a concern, go for sherry instead. And for my alcohol-free peeps, the alcohol content is cooked off and none remains in the final dish. But if you do still want to leave it out, that's okay too. Just replace it with a tad more broth. Add sugar or sweetener. And a little more mushroom stir-fry sauce. A half a teaspoon of sesame oil. And a pinch of white pepper. Stir this up and that's it for the sauce. By the way, you can always make this ahead of time or make multiple batches and leave it in the fridge for up to three days so you can cut down on the prep time when you know you have a few busy days ahead of you. In a separate container, mix up a cornstarch slurry and this will thicken the sauce at the very end. Now, let's move on to the chopping board. You'll need one clove of garlic. Yes, only one is necessary, but if you want more, of course you do you. And for convenience sake, I'm grating it with my box grater on the finer plane. Then you can push this aside and do the same with a bit of ginger. You only need a quarter teaspoon, though a little more is fine too. Then our other star ingredient, broccoli. This is already rinsed well and I'll cut bite-sized florets. 
How big or small that bite is, is completely at your discretion. I have just enough for tonight's dinner, but this is one of those veggies that's so easy to prep ahead of time. So if you happen to have more on hand, I'd say chop it all up and you can store it in a container and it stays fresh all week. Now we're nearly ready for the stove, but let's add a bit of cornstarch to our marinated vegan chicken shreds. Finally, we can get cooking. In a wok or large pan, heat about two tablespoons of cooking oil. My favorite, as always, is refined coconut oil. Let it melt over high heat and swirl it around the wok so the wok or pan can get nicely coated. Then when it's very hot and just barely starting to smoke, add your chickeny chickless seitan. Spread them out, but leave them alone to get some nice color on the bottom. This should take less than a minute. Look at this very lovely color. We'll brown the other side too for about 30 seconds. And this is why I love a wok. We can just push this all to the side and if you feel you need to, add a little more oil before adding the garlic and ginger. You can turn the heat down a bit for control so we don't burn anything. 15 to 30 seconds later, when the fragrance of the aromatics have bloomed, add your broccoli. Give your stir-fry sauce a quick mix and pour it in too. The broccoli will cook as the liquid comes to a simmer. In about two minutes, when the broccoli has become fork tender or is as cooked as you enjoy, turn off the heat, give your cornstarch slurry a little stir, and you can slowly pour it in. The sauce will thicken quickly in the residual heat and you may not need to use all of the slurry. Just use your judgment. If it thickens too much though, you can simply thin it out with a bit more broth or water. And now you have glorious glossy brown sauce enveloping perfectly cooked broccoli and tasty chickeny chickless seitan. It's sure to satisfy any Chinese chicken and broccoli craving. It really should be perfect by now. But if you did use other proteins instead of my seitan recipe, please taste it and add extra soy sauce or Chinese mushroom stir fry sauce if you like. Also by now, your steamed rice should be ready to load into some dinner bowls or plates. And generously heap on your vegan chicken and broccoli. And if you can remember, please take a photo of it and tag me on Instagram at Mary's Test Kitchen. I would love to feast my eyes on your creations. And excuse me while I have to take a bite myself, or a few bites. It's just so delicious. Thank you so much for watching, my friends, and thank you to everyone who requested this dish. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and make this recipe soon. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already for more easy, delicious vegan recipes like this. And remember, you can get the printable version of this recipe on marystestkitchen.com where I've also written up more details because, well, <laughs> I've always got more to say. Plus, while you're over there, if you leave a review, that would just help me out a great deal. On the subject of helping me out, you could also leave a comment here with what kind of recipes you want to see next year with the hashtag recipe request so I'll be sure to see it. Coming up next, I have even more vegan chicken dishes that you requested, which I have to go edit pronto, so bye for now!